You're watching the Coast to Coast Sports Show. Welcome to Coffee Chat. I have a guest here at the studio today, just popped in, uh, drove out from Winnipeg to see what our studio looks like, uh, Vin Robinson. Welcome, Vin, and uh, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me today. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Vin uh, is a uh, uh, programmer, it provides programming for our station uh, under the title Coast to Coast Sports. It's aired Fridays at 6.30 every week uh, on uh, NAC TV. And, uh, First of all, uh, Kevin, uh, what's your background? Uh, how did you get into this and so on? Well, I'm the Canadian athlete. I think that uh, a lot of people could resonate with that. That's how I had children come up uh, through club teams, school teams. Uh, we've all been there cheering them on in the sidelines, and that's really what has resurrected this in me. I originally was an athlete in St. Norbert, Winnipeg. and. Okay. Uh, Went on, played my high school years in, in Winnipeg at Vincent Massey, and uh, further than that, made it to the Hill at Carleton University in Ottawa. Okay. So were you in basketball, volleyball? Uh, baseball? I'd say basketball is my primary sport. It's uh, what, I, what I did best at the time. That's good. So then you have finished your college years and so on and came back home to Manitoba. And now you've got this project going. I assume you've been involved in uh, video and sports video for some time. Do you want to tell us a bit about where you're at with that and how your company works and so on? Yeah, so what always kinds of bring you back in as a parent is that you'd have children coming up through the, through the works again. Um, so I had, uh, in about uh, 2013, started this mission where we were going to take children from all across the province and teach them a skill, teach them the skill of basketball um, and how to deal with adversity in life because sport is life and it teaches you how to deal with things under duress and pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, so every Friday night River Osborne Community Centre was our, our base and we had about 60 kids that would come in there um, that would probably be on the street getting into trouble and we, we helped them. And uh, today, I'm proud to say that some of them have turned out to be criminal lawyers. Uh, uh, go down the list. Some professionals. Um, I'm proud to say that, that I came across these people at some stage of my life. Well, you always want to give back as an athlete. Most athletes and people that have played growing up, regardless of how far they go. I mean, even mums and dads, you know, they played a little bit of hockey when they were growing up and they want to help coach their own kids. So it's kind of in our genes to do that, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So now your, your company is called Coast to Coast Sports, or that's the title of the, the TV show. Uh, well, tell me a bit about your company, will you please? <laughs> I'll give you a little history there. Um, first and foremost, it started out as Winnipeg Super Sports Network. And this was about 2013. Uh, but then because of my connection through sport across the country in North America, um, when I would go on the road to a different province, different city, and we would go to air, it didn't really make much sense why Winnipeg was covering something in a different province. So that created the pivot uh, to grow the profile a little bit larger to coast-to-coast -coast sports. Okay. Um, and that's why all these other sports now fall under that umbrella. So, okay, so uh, basketball is the main sport that you cover, or what sort of sports do you cover, and where are those sports that you're presenting to us? I know it's basketball that I have seen, and the, the commentator on the basketball program that I've seen is wonderful. I mean, this is professionally done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what happens is that if you want to go to broadcast a live event, a live sporting event, it's very expensive. It costs about $20,000 in the ballpark to cover a live sporting event. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that there is very good production of sports that happen across the country, but they never get to air. So with having those sports, such as the National Basketball League of Canada, Western Canadian Bowling Tour, Cheer Canada, um, 
they have the production and we compile their footage into something that's roughly like what Why World of Sports used to be. It's a 30 minute segment mm -hmm. of uh, combined sports in our country so that if you were simply a basketball fan, you might bridge the gap and see cheerleaders. Okay, sure. You might bridge the gap and see some hockey. So within that 30 minute span, you're really getting the best of both worlds out of it. So most of what you're uh, sending us now comes out of uh, Eastern Canada, I think you were saying, but you want to try and move westward, do you? Or? That's right. So uh, really judging any sport in our country, if you really want to take a big stab at it, you have to go to Ontario. So, you know, the other provinces are just, they don't have the infrastructure set up for sports or training. So you have to go to the, the, the biggest province for that. Um, and what tends to happen is that if we do, took the opportunity to develop our own backyard and develop our players, the facilities that they have, uh, it would give us a greater opportunity to have something in our home to call ours. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's where the focus is right now. Uh, the focus is getting back to the root. Some of the things um, you know, every 10 years has something great that comes out of it. You know, we, we tend not to hang on to those, those, some of those good things. And we need to start really focusing on those good values and bringing them back. Um, an example of that would be, um, you know, kids going to sport. Mom and dad could both be there maybe in the 80s. Now things have changed. The cell phone is raising the children and both parents are working. So we have to kind of get back to the real things, real talk, sitting down, having dinner, putting the cell phone aside and, and, and staying focused on what the objective is. And the objective is our kids. Well, that's certainly the objective in minor sports by far, although, you know, I guess some people, you know, you always hope your, your child will do well and so on, but most of all, Parents are really just interested in the child having the experience and having a good experience uh, uh, with their minor sports or whatever they're doing. Uh, so uh, how can, if people are interested and, and uh, you know, want to contact you, I'm, I'm assuming that you would take video from people, that, you know, other organizations that would like to perhaps get their video shown across Canada and so on. Uh, that's what you're looking for, I assume, is that correct? That's right. So because of the existing pandemic, it's very difficult to be able to go out and shoot any events. Mm -hmm. So right now we're in a very good time. We're in the time of the vault, retro footage. So any uh, old footage, it doesn't matter if it was from high school years, college years, university years, professional years, Coast to Coast Sports would look at that footage. And if it's a classic game or something that has merit, by all means, we would compile it into the program and make sure that the nation can see this. And um, that's what we're about. We want to give a boost to the sports that have been buried and uh, give a true path to professionalism to those sports that need that opportunity. Now, we're a fairly small operation here in, uh, you know, it, at uh, Channel 117. We are now, of course, uh, NAC-TV. What other uh, networks and uh, channels you know, do you broadcast on? Do you have a contract with them to that you supply a video to to them? Right. So we really have three stages here. The first stage is web, obviously, and then the second stage is the weekly program that we do on Friday nights with NAC TV. Out of that footage, if we find that little Johnny went out and scored a hat trick in soccer, you know, maybe something that that is unbelievable. Then we take the show to the next level, we compile that, and we boost it up to a national outfit out of Hamilton called CHCH TV, which allows us to broadcast nationally. Okay. Um, we, we're not knocking at that door every week, but it is something that if we need to take the next step, we take it. Right. So are you looking for small channels like ours elsewhere in the country as well? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, they're... Uh, a bit of a dying breed, you know, and I think that the CRTC uh, and that uh, different communities really need to have that local feed, that local vibe, uh, not necessarily be controlled by the big corporate dollar because it, it sucks that out of the community.
So uh, I'm a strong advocate for NACTV. I think that we need more platforms like this across the country, and that's why I'm prepared to work with, uh, with the station. You ask a good question, Kevin. Um, you know, we have various programs, and I say we. I'm, I'm one of many guys that I work with that have played professional. Um, that we also mentor mentors, so we have guys that are playing university that, that help us with programs. And the Charles River Bronco program is just one example of um, how we try and give back. Um, we do a high performance program preparing them for football before they start in August. So. Myself, Lamar McGriggs, and Chuck Williams, a guy from the U.S. that uh, trains NBA and NFL players, um, we're lucky to have him here in the city. Um, we put these kids through some rigorous training. Um, we show a little bit of the, the soft stuff that we do, um, but we, we put them through hell for two hours, um, twice a week. And eventually, once the season begins, they don't really have to do a lot of conditioning. The football is left for the coaches to do with them. So ironically, even though we are football guys, uh, we're not coaching the football team because uh, there's many programs that utilize our help and we like to use, use our skills for everyone, not just one club. Um, so that's a good thing about what we do. So we, we go all year round and, and we help in many facets, um, a grassroots after school programming, a high performance training, club training. Um, if, it's, if it's involved with football, um, that's what we do because <laughs> we're football guys. Um, and I think it's really, really, really great that you guys are here actually covering what we do. Um, I think it's needed, so I really appreciate you taking the time with us. Well, absolutely, we're, we're happy to be part of the community. Uh, community is our game. Uh, Dave, talk about some of the other football clubs now. How you would like to see the expansion of what you're doing and uh, maybe somebody that's come in with minimal talent and how you've seen them develop. Really a catalyst that uh, makes you positive when you wake up in the morning and happy to do what you do every day? Oh, um, there are so many talented kids that have come through either our Premier Football Factory camps, um, I have an after school program called the Inner City Youth Football Program and you'd be surprised to see some of the, the talented girls that play football <laughs> and we teach them flag football right so um, I know there's a, a, a club now that's, that's under the Football Manitoba Halo called The Fearless, and that's um, and I know there's another club in Winnipeg as well, so I'm not excluding them. But it's a good opportunity now for girls to, to start playing football because, you know, it's not my place to exclude them, so it's good that we actually have a space for them to, to play and for us to nurture the talent at a young age. And there's interest. Uh, keeping them off the streets, I think, is what motivates me. Um, if I didn't have sport, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Although I got into some minor trouble <laughs> as a youth, uh, you know, I think sport kept me uh, on a you know on a on a straight and narrow 
so to speak. Um, so I use football as that avenue and that conduit. You know, you, you could be an artist, you could be a break dancer, and you could play basketball. If, you, if you've gone to the highest level, I think it's your duty to give back um, in some way, because it, was, it wasn't our right, it wasn't my right to play the game. I was very lucky. So having the access to the guys to help me out, like Lamar McGriggs, who played in the NFL for seven years, and, and played in the CFL for 13, to have him uh, in our city, uh, and for me to access him, to help the kids and, and for him to be willing to, uh, th that's where we need to be in this province. And uh, I welcome anyone that wants to do it. Hey, there's more than enough space. There's a lot of kids that are playing football in Manitoba. Um, I can honestly say from the day I left to go play professional in 1997, um, maybe there's 1,500 members of football in Manitoba. Okay, let's multiply that by 10. Um, <laughs> it's ridiculous now. Um, so we have to, you know, with, there's a big demand, so we have to supply it, right? Um, so whoever's out, whoever's out there willing to give back, there's a lot of room for that, and I'm just one of many. Just so that uh, Winnipeggers or anybody watching this understands that you're not an overnight success story, uh, you came from Daniel Mack, correct? Right? <laughs> no, I couldn't even, yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't make the football team at Daniel Mack right. when, uh, when I was there. There, there are some really good players that I still remember. Uh, um, that I looked up to. So, you know, you gotta know where you come from. <laughs> right, yeah. and uh, so I guess what I'm saying is that if, if anybody wanted to find out more about your program, uh, how to contact you, um, how can they do so? Uh, and uh, have that opportunity to go from perhaps a core school and broaden their horizons. Um, you know, you can always access me um, as long as you're, you're calling about getting better. <laughs> um, if I can't help, I'll try and help as, as, as much as I can, as long as it's football related. Um, you can email me right now, you can email me at Dave at uh, the acronym is CSA and the word is prepstar.com, Dave at CSA prepstar.com. Um, as well, we're going to have our inner city youth football program website up and running. I'll keep you posted with that. We're, on, we're developing that now. Um, I've, I've been evading Facebook and Twitter um, <laughs> for good reason. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of kids out there and parents that want to want to see what we're up to and they want to follow us. So we're creating all of that for them. Um, and we're excited about that. So we'll give you more information about how to access me. You can also access me at 204-890-7051. Um, and again, um, if you want to talk football, you can contact me. Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Vin Robinson with the Coast to Coast Sports Show. I promised you last week that we're going to be doing things that are a little bit different on the program week after week. And this week has to be one of the most special episodes that we're coming with in a very long time. I happen to have a very good friend of mine here today. His name is Charles Farms III. And he's got a great connection to football with his days that he's played from amateur to professional. And we're going to take our time to uh, get reacquainted with Charles Farns today. Charles, how you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing, sir? How you doing? Uh, not too bad. <laughs> I'm uh, sure that where you are is probably a little bit warmer than where I am. Uh, most definitely. I'm down here in uh, Houston, Texas. And I know from being up in Canada myself, beautiful country, but I know this time of year, it's definitely cold. Oh, that's for sure. Uh... Tell me, how's how's uh, things down in Houston? What's uh, what's going on down there? What's happening? 
I mean, right now, I mean, um, of course, with the recruiting of uh, high school football and everything, a lot of uh, a talented uh, young men are getting ready to decide where they're going to go on and uh, get scholarships and play football. Uh, we're a little bit disappointed, of course, because of the Texans and not being in the Super Bowl. But, uh, of course, next week, with it being the uh, Super Bowl, uh, people are getting ready for that. And today was the Pro Bowl. So, I mean, uh, people are just transitioning from uh, football to also the Rockets. And uh, looking forward to the Rockets having a really good season this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sport has definitely been uh, on the high side uh, in the Houston area. Um, I guess, you know, one of the things that I found very special when we're talking about football in the past couple of weeks is uh, an inductee getting uh, into the Hall of Fame, a, a coach by the name of uh, Jimmy Johnson. Um, you, you have a strong connection with Jimmy. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, about your experience with him? Um, Jimmy Johnson is a great coach. He's a great man. Um, Jimmy recruited me coming out of high school. So um, I know him personally. He did coach me. I was blessed that uh, Jimmy recruited me and I had a chance to uh, get a scholarship and to play at the University of Miami and also get a chance to get a, a great education. So uh, Jimmy is a... Uh, He's a special man. He's a special man. He helps you uh, to be a better man. I mean, Jimmy comes at come comes at you with no. Uh, um, Jimmy, let's say he's real. I mean, he's gonna make you work hard. The coaches are gonna work hard to get you prepared, and uh, it makes you not only better for the sport or football, but it makes you better for life. Um, Jimmy had a few things that he helped. Um, put in our minds. We had a few things outside the locker room that helped us. Uh, one of the things, all it takes is all you've got. And another one was attitude plus effort equals performance. So I was blessed to be able to be uh, around Jimmy Johnson. And he's still a person where I see him. He, he comes up, he speaks, and uh, we have conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Uh really a football family, a football family for life when you think about it, but uh, kind of what you guys created down there is a, a culture. And um, I'm, I'm hard pressed to even say that there's a lot of NFL teams where is, that was as talented as uh, those championship teams out of uh, Miami. So talk to me a little bit about that and, and, and the stigma that still remains with it years after the, the championship dates. I mean, at, at Miami, I mean, we had a lot of great athletes. It was it was a lot of, of great players that loved the game of football. But uh, the way we came they, at each other, the way we practiced, we practiced hard. Uh, we came to each other, and it made us better for the games. We were actually uh, to where practices were harder than the games. We used to call games, uh, say the games were like payday. That was the easy part of it. But it made us better. We weren't you know, nice to each other where we were, uh, let's say, just being soft. It was about a, uh, an attitude. It was about a pride. It was about winning. And uh, that helped us uh, be better. It made, it made us stronger. And it, it's a brotherhood. It is a brotherhood. And uh, you can't go out there um, seeing your brother giving it his, his all, and you're not going to give it your all. So, I mean, it made us better. And it made us very, very... Um, United, and United we stand and we were ready to stand for anything. And we didn't really care. We had that uh, bad boy stigma that was put up on us, but uh, we didn't care because the way we looked at it, and the way I always say is uh, football is organized violence. Mm -hmm. There's a, actually a, a stunning stat that, that I was dumbfounded by. And looking at this stat, I realized that probably about 80% of NFL players happen to come out of the Florida area. And, uh, you know, some are made up out of Texas and sprinkled all the rest throughout the U.S. and, and parts of Canada that they come from. Um, but can you touch a little bit on that? Why is um, Florida such a melting pot for the sport of football? Well, first of all, it's a great it's a sunshiny state. I mean, the average year around temperature in Florida is like 72 degrees. Um, people love football. I mean, here in the United States, 
there's really three top stakes for football players, especially skilled athletes, are Florida, Texas, and California. I mean, because you have football, you have track. Um, and I know here in the state of Texas, they pay a lot of money for different stadiums. You'd be surprised at some of the high schools and what facilities they have. A lot of high schools here have their stadiums, which are turf stadiums, right there on campus. And in Florida, I mean, you have the perfect areas. I mean, you could know when, we, when you say hit the beach, we have training to where um, athletes are running in the sand to be faster, to be stronger. So, I mean, Florida's just a, it's, it's a melting pot, and it's a great place for, for football. Right, right. Um, so, you know, you touched upon it. You talk, talked about the, the training facilities, the professional aspect. And, and, and that's going to kind of segue into this next question, which is um, how is training and preparation today different than the yesteryear? Um, that preparation, how do, you, how do you approach it versus, I guess, some of the, uh, the talent that's coming through today? Um, I think um, now, I mean, you have a lot of, a lot of different um, facilities now for kids. Uh, you have a lot of different trainers. I mean, I try to mentor and train kids that want to train and want to work hard. So, I mean, you have the modern technology. You have all the different training facilities. Um, now, there's a lot of different techniques that weren't learned back then. It was more so old school. Now, they have that, um, that opportunity. But the thing about it is now, do the kids really want to work as hard as we used to work? I mean, we used to run heels which made us stronger and made us faster. Um, but it's, it's according to do the kids want to put in the work these days. We knew we had to put in the work. Some of those training sessions and, and film and ways to prepare back in the day, it's a little bit easier to see the X's and O's today than than a couple of years ago, you know what I mean? I mean, that's so true. I mean, it, it would, I don't even know, the way I look at it now is what we would have had or how even it would have been if we would have had all the different stuff that they have now as far as the video and whatnot. For us, it was just, old school film, which you filmed all the practices, um, and you looked at uh, the film after, after your practices. But like I said, it, it's, all about, it's all about the heart. You, you have to want to do it. That's another thing we had at the University of Miami in the training, uh, the training room. If you were there taking care of injuries or you were just getting taped up or anything like that, we had a saying that was right there that was painted on the wall and it asked you a question. What have you done today to help the Miami Hurricanes be successful tomorrow? But that's also that's also a self evaluation because you can look at look at yourself in the mirror. You can ask yourself, "What have I done today to help myself be successful tomorrow?" Right. And and what you're talking about there is internalization. So, uh, Charles, come on. I mean, as athletes, we all know that we had that one or two songs that we have in that track uh, that's pumping us up just before a game. So tell me, what, what, what would you listen to be, to get you amped up? <laughs> well, for me, it's, um, it was old school for me. So one of the greatest songs that came out was I was, I was a fan of back then, back with the rap game and everything, Eric B and Rakim. And one of the questions, how could I move the crowd? First of all, there's no mistakes allowed. When I'm playing defensive back, playing free safety, you know, any mistake could cause a touchdown, so you have to be prepared. Another one, of course, was I'm, I ain't no joke, <laughs> you know. So you, that's a confidence builder to where those were songs we listened to. Of course, we were, we were really big with a two live crew and everything like that, Uncle Luke. Uh, if it was a night game, especially if we were playing Notre Dame when we were playing um, also Florida State, something like that, one of our rivalries. It could be Phil Collins. I can feel it in the air tonight. 